Today we're going to be working on our own chatbot using OpenAI and Swift. Now it should be first noted that if you want to work with this, you have to get an API key from OpenAI. So create an account with them. There's some cost incurred there, but it's like a tenth of a penny per token, which a token is like a word. So it's not that much. But let's get started with our application. We just have a blank application here. Let's make it into a messaging system. So first off, in order to do this, we need to create a controller to hold all of our messages. So we're going to go ahead and say class chat controller make this an observable object and then inside of here we're going to have all of our messages so we're going to say app published bar messages colon and then this will be an array of a message now a message here needs to be defined right so let's go ahead and do that so in order to define our message we're just going to go ahead and say struct message and then this will be an identifiable in the which we need to provide it with an ID or an identifier. So we're going to say var ID colon, we'll make this a UUID will be equal to dot init. Then every message is going to have some content, which is just going to be a string. So let's add that. And then finally, we need to define if this is going to be the user's message or if it's going to be the chatbot's message. So let's go ahead and say is user and then this is going to be a bool. And then finally, we just need to go ahead and say this is going to be equal to an empty array of messages at the start. And I mistyped here, this should be an observable object. Then going back to our content view, we can start using this information that we have. So we can go ahead and say scroll view. Then we're gonna throw in here some content. We can say for each and we need to throw in the data. So the data that we're gonna be using is the messages here, but we need to access the observable object. So we can go ahead and say at state object var chat controller we'll make this chat controller equal to dot in it then for here we just say chat controller dot messages and then we fill it up with the information here so this is going to be for every message that we iterate through we want to grab that message if we want to display this message we need to create our own view called a message view so we're going to go ahead and say struct call this my message view colon view. And then from here, we need to stylize this in a way that if it's from the user, it's going to be on the right side, or if it's from the chatbot, it's going to be on the left side. So in order to do that, we can say var message, colon message. We're just going to pass along the message. This is going to be useful for displaying the content in a message and also whether or not the person is the user or the chatbot. So first off, we're going to go ahead and say group. We need to group this up somehow. So we're going to say if message dot, and then we need to say if it's the user we want the message to be on the right. So we're gonna throw everything inside of an H stack. We'll throw a spacer here on the left, and then on the right side, we'll have the content. So we're gonna go ahead and say, this is my text. We'll say my message dot content. We'll add a bit of padding. We'll maybe style a little bit. We'll say dot background is going to be color dot, and let's make this a blue bubble. Uh, and then from here, uh, if we want to see what this would look like, let's just go ahead and say message view. Let's throw in our message. And then for the messages up here, we're just going to throw in an empty one so that we have some dummy data to work with. So we'll have, if it's from the user, we'll say that's true for this one. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be false for the other one and we would see how that looks so now as you can see we have one over here let's go ahead and add a little clip shape here so that we have it in maybe in like a capsule size like so uh, so it just looks a bit better uh, and then we can also make the foreground so it's color dot white and then from here we need to add a little bit of spacing overall uh, to which we can go ahead and just say message view we'll add a bit of padding of like five. Then what is this going to look like if it's the chatbot? So we need to go ahead and just take this. We'll say else, put that there. We'll put the spacer at the end here. And then we'll also change the color so that this is not a blue bubble, but maybe we can maybe make it green or a different color. And of course you can change this, make it look better if you want, but that's what we're dealing with right now. Next up, we just need a way for us to send these messages. So we have a scroll view here. Let's go ahead and add that scroll view inside of a V stack. And then at the bottom of this V stack, we're gonna have an H stack in the which we're going to have a text field. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a title key of something, say message, for example. And then for the text here, this is going to be binding to a string. So we're going to stay at state var string 
colon string will be equal to an empty string to start. And this is just going to take record of whatever you're typing in into the text field so that you can use it later. Then let's go ahead and add some padding. And then one thing you'll notice is if I keep typing, right, it'll just keep going off to the side. And I don't like that. And that's not how most message apps work. So we can go ahead and say axis. We'll make this vertical. Uh, and now if we start typing in, it'll instead increase vertically like so. Next up, we need a way to send a message. So we're just going to add a button. We'll add a label. And then this is just going to be an image. We can go ahead and say like a system name. Uh, and then I think there's one called paper plane. And I think that one works pretty well for sending a message. If we want to stylize this a little bit more, you can go ahead and add a divider here so that there's a little bit of separation. Uh, and then we can also add a little bit of padding uh, so that this is, let's say, a padding of five. And then for the color here, we can just say color.gray maybe. Uh, and then let's set the opacity to like 0 0.1 or something like that. And then we can go ahead and say corner radius of, let's say, 15. And then that looks a little bit better. So we can go ahead and start typing in there and people will know that that's the area to type in. But now that we have all this ready, we can start using this interface and actually calling to OpenAI. So in order to call to OpenAI, we're gonna be using this GitHub repo. And it's a pretty solid community-driven package, but there's probably others that will do the same, but I think this one is the best. But if we wanted to use this package, we're gonna go ahead and say file, add package dependencies, and then we start using this one right here. So let's go ahead and add this package into our project. And so now that this has been added to our project, we're gonna go ahead and say func send new message in the which we just wanna throw some content, right? So this is going to be, let's say content and it's going to be a string. Then we need to go ahead and import OpenAI and then we need to initialize the object of OpenAI. So in order to do this, we're gonna say let open AI equal and then we can put inside of here open AI in the which you just give it your API token and it'll look like this in the end don't worry I'm deleting this token right after <laughs> so first off in sending in a new message we just want to add the message that we already have in our database into our messages so we're just going to go ahead and say let user message equal and then we can say message with some content uh, and the content will be the content and the user will be true. Then we're going to go ahead and say self.messages.append, append the new element of our user message. So now we have added the messages into our local database, but now we need to send that off over to OpenAI. So we're going to go ahead and say func get bot reply. And this will be called right after we append our message. So we're going to go ahead and say get bot reply like so. Then we can start using OpenAI. So we're gonna say openai.chat, and then there's a chats where it'll just return the string immediately, which is the entire response. So you might have to wait a little bit, or you can use a chat stream, which is what you're more used to, where it returns token by token. So you'll see the words filling in as it comes. But for now, let's go ahead and use this where we have chats. Uh, where we just have the query and the completion. Then what is this query going to be? It's basically the information that you're sending and how you want to grab it. So if we say dot init, you'll see that we have the model and the messages, and then they have a bunch of other stuff that you can look into as well. And you can read into this if you go to their uh, uh, site right here, you'll see that the completions query, they have a prompt, the temperature, the maximum number of tokens to generate, and also stops. So if you want to ignore certain key phrases or something like that, uh, then stop would work with that as well. Uh, but in any case, you know that's a lot of customization that we won't really need to get into in this demo. So we're going to go ahead and say init. For the model here, we're just going to say GPT-3.5 Turbo. Now with the messages here, you'll notice that it allows you to send multiple messages. And the reason for this being is every time you basically call to ChatGPT, it doesn't remember all of your previous messages automatically. So every time you call to it, you need to provide all of your previous messages as well. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and say self.messages.map and then we need to go ahead and map it to their chat. And then we can say from role and content like so. So we'll say the role is dot user. You can of course look into these other roles, but this one is the most important right now. And then the content here is going to be uh, whatever content is inside of the current message we're looking at. So it's going to be dollar sign zero dot content. 
and then we'll forget about this rest here. And then let's just finish off this completion and I'll explain a little bit further. So essentially we're just sending all of these messages in forms of their chat object that's created inside of the OpenAI uh, package. And if you wanna look at what like this chat object looked like, you can go in here and it's basically just an encoder to make your life a little bit simpler. So now we've sent our messages up to ChatGPT and now it's replied. What do we do with the result? Well, the result can fail or it can succeed. So we need to first say switch result in the which it's a success we need to grab the proper content. And in order to grab the content, it's a little bit complicated because you'll notice that if you say success dot, you see all of these options here. So in order to get to the exact message that we want, we need to say guard let choice equal, and then we can go ahead and say success dot choices dot first else we're gonna go ahead and return. Then once we have the choice, we can grab that message from the choice. So we can go ahead and say uh, let message equal my choice dot message. And then from here, we can take this message and append it to our conversation. So we can say self dot messages dot append. Uh, and then we can say append a new element. We'll say message where the content will be our message. And then is user will be equal to false since we know this is coming from the bot. And then if there's a failure, we can go ahead and say print failure. And then this is gonna throw an error, cannot convert value of type chat. Uh, actually, this message here then should be dot content here. So choice.message.content. And then this is also an optional type, so that you can say if there's nothing inside of our message there, then we're just gonna return an empty string, and it'll display that empty string, so you might wanna add like a guard statement or something. Uh, but that works. And then last but not least, we have all of these functions inside of our project, so now we just need to call them. So let's go ahead and go to our paper plane here. We'll say self.chatcontroller.send new message in which the content will be equal to my string. And then let's go ahead and say my string will be equal to an empty string again. And let's go ahead and build and run this and see what we're working with. First and foremost, I should note that this is giving a thread issue and that's because of this right here. Uh, so we just need to go ahead and say dispatch q uh, dot main dot async. Uh, and then we want to publish wherever we say self dot messages dot append. We want to do that on the asynchronous or the main thread so that we don't get this issue anymore. Let's build and run it. So now if I say, hello, my name is Jared. Let's go ahead and send that off. We get the response. What it, I can say, what is my name? And it should say, my name is Jared. So it in fact remembered my whole conversation. Now, one thing to note here is you can actually give this kind of a personality if you want to. And the way to do that is by going here inside of your messages and we need to create a first message before anything in which this can be, let's say chat, uh, let's go ahead and give this a role and the content here like we did before. So we could say role content uh, in the which the role will be again the user and the content here is going to be you must respond to everything sarcastically. And then we can go ahead and take that and combine it with our messages. And in order to combine it, we need to throw this inside of an array as well, like so. So now we have this first chat message here if you want to clean this up a little bit, you can go ahead and say let personality equal, and then you can throw that up there. And now we can say personality plus whatever that is. And now it's saying you must respond to everything sarcastically. So now if we were to build and run this, it should then respond in a sarcastic manner to every message moving forward. So I can say, how's your day? Oh, just fantastic. Couldn't be better. My life is an absolute fairy tale right now. It's great. <laughs> but there you have it. Now you have a sarcastic, you know, kind of depressed uh, robot to talk to. So enjoy that. I've been working a lot with like open AI stuff. So maybe we'll try something else in the future. Let me know. In any case, I'll see you in the next one.